Hey, what's going on, everybody? <clears throat> Man Cave Media here again. Um, yesterday it was like 70 degrees. Today, oh, it's so cold you can see your breath. So, and we've actually got, believe it or not, being in Tennessee, we've got a chance, or well, not a chance, but we're going to be getting snow on Tuesday. So, I figured this is going to be the first off-topic video that's non-RC related that I've ever done on this channel. And I'm doing this as a test to see. I'm going to show you number one. A lot of you guys aren't familiar with that. That truck right there is synonymous with my older YouTube channels that were hacked and are no longer in use. I'm going to be getting into that. But also, I want to show you what I've got for this. Now, I'm going to start off by saying that down here in the south, whenever there's even the remote slightest chance of snow, everybody freaks the hell out and starts running to the grocery store to grab everything they can, bread, milk, eggs, like it's the end of the freaking world, even if there's only one or two inches of snow expected. And last year, I had a different four-wheeler. I had a uh, 2007 uh, Honda Rubicon. Oh, no, not Rubicon. I'm sorry, I had a, a Foreman 500 four-wheel drive that was lifted three inches sitting on 27-inch Maxxis Mudzillas. And it had a winch, all the good stuff to it. And what I had gone and done, I had, I had built a plow. The plow is actually sitting down, well, you can't see it because the car's in the way, but I actually have a shop sitting down there where I just came from. With this, yeah. Do what? Yeah. See, that one's not going to get edited out. But I actually hand built a plow last year out of a 55 gallon drum, an old uh, rear blade attachment for a lawnmower, and I, I had some very good success. We had over a foot of snow last year, and I kept our street clean since the city doesn't come out here and do jack shit until after I've already done everything. So this year, this time around, I'm rolling with a slightly older four-wheeler. This is a 2002 Suzuki Vincent uh, 500 Quad Runner. It's an automatic. It's got the CVT training on it. And I took the stock tires and I ordered a set of... Uh, these are stock, by the way. They're 25 uh, 812, 812 fronts and 810 rears by 25s. So they're the stock size tires, um, but I've replaced them with Interco Swamp Lights and STI HD2 alloy wheels, but there's the biggest addition. I went to, uh, I believe it was motosport.com and ordered this uh, Bear Force plow. It's a 50 inch plow, so it's 4 foot 2 inch wide which is just perfect because it just spans the spans the length of the four-wheeler perfectly. Unlike most people who get the $1,000 power uh, power assist, I'm not so lazy that I can't reach down here and pull this loose to rotate the blade. You need some exercise and get the blood flowing again when you're sitting on that for an hour. As a matter of fact, it may look like rain, but it's actually kind of snowing out here, too. Interesting. But, yeah. Bought me a real plow. I painted it. Of course, it got beat up from uh, grading the driveway a few times. But this is, this is the beauty of a Suzuki. On most Hondas and everything else, there's a uh, CV shaft that comes out of your rear gearbox and runs down to your rear end. This however, has a direct couple from the gearbox to the rear end. Nothing to break in between. There's just a lock joint from gearbox to rear end. The rear end actually goes all the way up to the gearbox. I don't know that in any light. You guys really can't see that. And huh, Guess what? I have a drop light. The rear end goes straight up into a direct couple on the back of the four-wheeler, which I thought was pretty damn cool does away with all the play that uh like my foreman it was horrible if it started jumping you're gonna be breaking gears as the drop light goes back up 
And the front, I've gone ahead and I've locked the front end too. So I've got full four-wheel drive on demand when I hit it. As I noticed right away when I was uh, taking hills and stuff with it that it would just jump and buck. So I went ahead and I put the locker kit in the front end. And now there's no more jumping and bucking and one wheel spinning, flying mud everywhere. But this right here, these did not come with the uh, plow. What those are actually are, are old CB antennas that I had laying around. I just drilled holes through the top of the plow, put the uh, coax mount on the bottom end, screwed the top end in, cut them down to a more scale size, and then painted them with the plow. But enough of that. We're going to go over here to the Dodge as I shield the camera from the rain slash snow. Uh, it's more like freezing rain, but same basis. This is my 99 Dodge Ram 3500, one ton, that has a uh, 8 liter V10 Magnum in it. Uh, I really should have got it on the other side. Really, really should have got it on the other side. Ugh. Man. Especially since this thing hasn't started in a few days and it likes to act all squirrely on cold days. There we go. Let's see, let's key this baby over. That way I can also turn down the radio too because it was really, really loud. But she's only got 141,000 on her. And she starts right up too. This thing is a gas hog. But it does have the power. I know I'm going to get hating comments on this, but yes, the 8 liter does put out more torque and more horsepower than a stock Cummins does. It's been proven. Go to the Dodge's website, check it out. But I've got the usual issues. I've got all the cracks in the dash. Synonymous problems with an old truck being in the sun. My brakes. The light comes on every once in a while due to my power steering. Due to this truck not having a brake booster, unlike most vehicles, you have a master cylinder and a brake booster. I have computer controlled brakes with a hydraulic assist, which means that there's a hydraulic line running from my power steering pump up to my brakes. And that's what uh, provides me with the assist, the power assist for the ABS. And I've been noticing lately that my brake light's been coming on after taking like a hard left turn or whatever. So I know right away that that means that my power steering pump has got something funky with it. But as we let her warm up, yeah, it's definitely cold out. The truck does not sound like a, a gas motor. It sounds like a damn Cummins. Sounds pretty good to me. What I've done is I used to have a stack in it. Yes, I know people can call me gay for having a, having a stack on a gas vehicle. Well, do your history, folks. Back in the days, stacks were originally invented for pickup use in, I believe, the 1930s. Chevrolet introduced them for uh, farm work back when uh, pickup trucks doubled as tractors so that people would not catch their fields on fire. So next time you see a truck that's a gas motor and it has stacks on it and make fun of it, uh, make sure you do your history first before you start making fun. It actually sounded really good with the stack. It was really, really, really freaking loud. I mean, you couldn't even hold a conversation, let alone even hear yourself think inside of it. So. Doing this on the ultimate budget, I went out and bought a, a Super 44 Flowmaster, welded that down on there, and then being broke as usual, I uh, reused my original 4 inch stack. I've got a 6 inch one sitting in the basement, it was just too damn big to be underneath the truck. 
I reused the 4 inch stack to give me length to clear the rear end with it. So I do have full exhaust running from the manifolds all the way to just past the rear end, which by the way, this truck has a uh, Dana 60 front straight, at straight axle and a Dana 80 rear. And with my four wheel drive here, four high, I've got obviously one back wheel locking and one front wheel locking. But in four low, I have a locked front and a locked rear. And this damn thing will, this thing will pull the world around in four low. I don't think you can go any faster than, uh, God, maybe about 15 miles an hour. But I need to warm this thing up a little bit and, uh, I'm going to take you guys on just a quick little warm-up drive with me as it starts raining harder. I, I must say, too, once the, uh, yeah, I'm just using a piece of Velcro to hold this down, so to hold the camera to the dash, so it is going to be a little jumpy. But I must say that ever since I put the Flowmaster in there, the exhaust has gotten a lot more quiet in cab. It's actually uh, tolerable. Good lord. I get the newspaper. Plus, let this thing warm up more. God, it is nasty. Let's see if I can get this on a little tighter. Nope, not wanting to go there because I ripped that other piece of uh, ripped that other piece of uh, Velcro off. The hood ornament there is actually a. Uh, I was going to go with the Mack Bulldog, then I realized how stupid that would look on a Dodge. They do make a bunch of uh, Ram ones, but they looked all retarded, so I ended up buying a uh, an Eagle, which I can, uh, I don't know if I'm going to, but it's an option. I can uh, light the Eagle's eyes, but at nighttime it's pretty cool. My cab clearance lights up top shine on the back of that Eagle, so it's lit up orange at night just from the uh, cab marker lights. Oh, this is kind of odd. You guys have never uh, seen anything other than the Man Cave Studios, let alone being in a being in a vehicle. We're pulling onto uh, Highway 12 North right now, going towards Cheatham Dam. Coming up here on uh, Cheap Hill Church of Christ and Cheatham Dam Road. The Chapmansboro Post Office. To my left is the, uh, the Lindall Estate. Uh, once again, I apologize for the camera being so shaky. It's just that I don't have all my Velcro for my dash mount, and I don't have my uh, GoPro working yet. We're coming up on uh, Osborne's equipment repair on the left here, and then I'm gonna make a, uh, well, not really, I think I'm gonna go the distance. What's nice about having the dually, though, is in the winter time, they only plow the center line of the street. Get some heat going in here, I'm freaking freezing. You guys cold? God, it's like 40 degrees outside. It's like two degrees inside this truck. Um, just past uh, West Cheatham Elementary there on the right. And the hell? Fan's making a nice noise now. 
There we go. This right here is Canada's uh, country store on Highway 12 North. Good lord, woman, you have the windows, doors wide open. Uh, right there is uh, Henrietta Volunteer Fire Department and the uh, dump here for uh, those of us with uh, Cheatham County tags. Foster on. The vibrations that the camera's feeling, yes, I feel them too in the seat of my pants, so yeah. I guess the Velcro is not really all that bad because I do feel it myself when I'm uh, driving. It's in part to the uh, BF Goodrich All-Terrain TAKOs that I have on there. I'm sorry that this video is dragging on so long. I'm sure most of you have already have lost your uh, attention span, but uh, I figured since there was no chance of doing an RC video today, I figured I'd get out and do something wise, at least just to throw up on the channel for you guys to watch. Um, and here we are coming back around to uh, this white fence here is the old Lindall estate. It's, I forget, some country musician bought the damn place. Right there you'll see my uh, old truck. And coming back to the house pretty much almost. This video is probably going to take like six hours to upload to YouTube. Yes, this truck is an automatic, but I do shift it like a manual because I have uh, a very, very well-built transmission. The transmission itself is rated for got 800 something horsepower and over a thousand foot-pounds of torque. It's a stage three. Uh, Stock Dodge transmission, which uh, took a shit on me, so I had to uh, took it over to uh, Automatics R Us and had Dave uh, rebuild the sucker heavy duty for me. And uh, this is this is the road I live on, and uh, what I plow every winter because the county doesn't come out to do anything. nice when you get down here to the circle because it's just all wide open and you just go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And last we pull back down into the driveway where it's not all... Ugh. It's still cold out. And my phone's going off. Probably an email from you too. You know, that's one thing I've really, really got to to talk about too. I cannot express how grateful I am that all you guys who have subscribed to me as of uh, in the last couple weeks, I cannot thank you guys enough, man. That's awesome. I've gone from practically zero subscribers to, God, almost 60 now. Uh, I really, really appreciate that. Oh, God, we gotta get out of it. Damn it. The everyday life of having ADD. Uh, I think Aaron, uh, medic, said it best. I have to get my ADD connected with my ADHD, so I have my HD and my 3D connected together. But, all right, I've wasted pretty much 20 minutes of you guys' time. I'm going to go ahead and call the video there. Hopefully, I'll have some snow up soon, but uh hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hit like, subscribe, uh, favorite it, share it, do whatever you want with it, and uh, we'll see you later.